In today's class, we will be talking about the side effects of this radiation, how this radiation, the biological effects of this radiation and the health physics regarding uh, which should be taken into consideration by every dental physician while exposing a, a particular patient to a specific type of radiograph. So what is radiation biology? Now, radiation biology is defined as effects of any uh, kind of ionizing radiation on the biological tissue. The term ionizing radiation over here plays an important role in radiation biology because of the mere fact that it's an ionizing radiation which uh, produces the damage to the surrounding structures in a human uh, tissue or any specific biological tissue. Now, as I told in the previous class, radiation is of two types, ionizing as well as non-ionizing type of radiation, wherein the non-ionizing do not pose any threat to the surrounding structures of the area exposed because of the lack of energy dissipation from this radiation. But on the other hand, the ionizing radiation, because of its potential to ionize the surrounding structures, now this radiation has the ability to dissipate this energy to the surrounding areas so the areas which are not needed uh, for the radiation for the uh, diagnostic purpose are also exposed by this uh, kind of radiation with the production of specific uh, free radicals which in turn uh, have a disastrous effect on the biological tissue tissues so we'll be talking about the effect of this ionizing radiation in the coming slides now, so what are the sources of radiation? In general, uh, all the radiations can be uh, broadly classified into natural uh, sources and artificial sources, wherein the natural sources are uh, predominantly from uh, cosmic uh, radiations or terrestrial radiations or few radioactive elements which are found in minute quantities within the Earth's crust. Now, the artificial sources are where we come into play. Now, these artificial sources, be it consumer products or medical applications, both of them uh, uh, combine together to produce a uh, minimal amount of radiation uh, which is uh, uh, which might approve uh, uh, disadvantages to the uh, living beings now among the medical application we know all the uh, medical x-rays or the dental x-rays or nuclear medicine itself uh, when compared to the consumer products like nuclear fallouts or nuclear hazards from nuclear reactors they pose a minor threat the major threat or uh, being the nuclear fuel and the nuclear fallout which uh, have a disastrous effect on the living tissues. So we can see in this uh, diagram how uh, the various procedures uh, used in the medical and the dental field uh, especially have the respective amount of absorbed dose and the effective dose. In the last class we've talked about these uh, terms the absorbed dose and the effective dose and how it is calculated. So we can see over here uh, when compared to the panoramic radiograph, the full mouth uh, radiograph uh, has uh, a large amount of uh, 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 exposed radiation. So if ever uh, we need a full mouth radiograph or a radiograph uh, which need to give out information from all the teeth in the human jaw, we usually prescribe a panoramic radiograph despite its a few disadvantages. Similarly, we can also see how the collimator types have a, a significant effect on the, on the amount of uh, effective uh, radiation or the absorbed dose uh, on the human body, on the human jaws especially. Now if you see the rectangular uh, 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 collimators have a far more lesser amount of absorbed dose when compared to round uh, collimators. So moving on to the exact chemistry or the chemical process or the chemical uh, sequelas which take place once a radiation uh, of ionizing uh, kind of radiation hits a human tissue. Broadly, its effect can be classified as a direct effects as well as indirect effects. Now direct, direct effects is nothing but the uh, direct effect of this energy which is carried by the photons of the X-rays upon the various molecular structures within the uh, organic tissue or the living tissue. Now, primarily the most important or the most uh, susceptible kind of uh, biological macromolecule is the DNA which is found, is found in uh, plenty in uh, human tissues. Now this involves a uh, few steps the, but the basic principle behind these uh, uh, various steps is the production of free radicals. Now this production of free radicals comes directly from the uh, macromolecules which is being affected by these radiations. Now as you can see if you take R as the macromolecule which uh, for example is a DNA. Now when it is exposed to X-ray radiation or huge amount of energy carried in the way of packets of photons. Now this there's free radical production from this DNA 
Now this R dot which de denotes an ion, so it is it denotes a loss of electron or a, a gain of an electron depending upon the process over there. Now this uh, free radical is unstable with the production of a proton and an electron that is primarily from the DNA itself. Now what this free radical does is it is because it is unstable. Now it tries to find ways through which it can attain stability. Now there are two ways by which it can attain stability. One by dissociating further into another uh, stable product and giving up another uh, ionized radi uh, radical or a uh, un another unstable uh, molecule as the term dissociation tells that this DNA uh, unstable DNA breaks up into a subcategory of a DNA or a smaller part of a DNA which is more stable along with the production of another uh, molecule or another uh, uh, ionized uh, ra radical or a unstable free radical that would be one process the other process would be cross-linking now this if uh, suppose if we take two instances wherein uh, two types of uh, DNAs are affected by this radiation and we get two free radicals say an uh, R dot and an S dot so there are two different DNAs now, what this does is both R dot R uh, free radical as well as S free radical both are unstable so what they do is they combine together being uh, producing a much more stable uh, product but a different uh, kind of DNA uh, product so this a uh, difference uh, different types of DNAs which are produced now that may give rise to future uh, mutations or any kind of different or abnormal protein uh, uh, productions which is undesirable to the human tissues now that being the direct effect the indirect effects mu is much more uh, complicated and much more uh, dangerous to the human tissue primarily because of the amount of water content within the human body. Now the indirect effects, what happens is this energy which is carried by the X-ray radiations directly affects the water, uh, which is water content which is present within the human body. Now the water, as we know, breaks up into uh, a various number of uh, free radicals uh, such as the superoxides or the hydroxyl ions or the hydrogen ions, which are highly reactive in nature and they react further react with other organic uh, macromolecules thereby causing further sequelae of reactions and thereby causing different other kinds of free uh, organic solvent molecules which are very dangerous to the normal human tissue so what uh, as you can see there is the most predominant effect which is seen primarily because the human uh, body composition is predominantly of uh, water now this uh, photon is uh, absorbed by the water molecule as you can see in the diagram over here and this water molecules are ionized to produce various number of free radicals uh, which uh, causes changes within the surrounding structures by reacting with the other organic solvent molecules. We can see how this radiolysis or the ionization of water uh, takes place. Primary uh, reaction is a photon plus water which gives rise to a hydroxyl ion. Now this hydroxyl ion is very unstable and very re highly reactive to the surrounding uh, tissues and it uh, via various number of reactions produces as you can see in the blue marked areas various number of highly reactive dangerous and uh, free radicals the blue uh, molecules as you can see over here are the various uh, free radicals which are produced because of the radiolysis of this water molecule now the effects uh, are somewhat similar uh, to the uh, direct effects what uh, the sequelae of these uh, free radicals what they do after uh, attaining the unstable uh, structures uh, primarily by condensation or rearrangement primarily uh, what it basically does is this unstable nature of uh, these free radicals have to be changed into a somewhat stable uh, stable molecules or stable uh, structure that is uh, by reacting uh, via other uh, normal uh, tissue structures or tissue uh, macromolecules or reacting within themselves uh, uh, ca causing two different kinds of uh, free radicals to combine together to produce a much more stable uh, macromolecule. That would be rearrangement and condensation. These are the two processes by which uh, these water molecules or free radicals attain stability. So what are the different types of exposures to radiation? Primarily because of the uh, duration or the amount of uh, dose which is uh, uh, which is uh, to which a human body or a human tissue is exposed to and also depending upon the type of changes which take place within the body uh, because of these uh, ionizing radiations it can be uh, classified as acute exposure and chronic exposure 
The basic difference between both of them is acute exposure is the effect of any ionizing radiation upon organic molecules and the changes it directly brings about within the molecules thereby producing any harmful effects. As I told you the direct or indirect effects, indirect effects uh, which produces changes within the DNA uh, by causing a different type of DNA molecules thereby producing different kind of uh, uh, codes to produce different kind of uh, proteins that would be the uh, direct exposure or the acute exposure which is totally dependent upon the amount of exposure initially the body or the tissue is exposed to. Now the chronic exposure on the other hand is more of a long term kind of uh, effects wherein the because of these changes uh, produced because of uh, due to the initial exposure of uh, radiation to the human tissues the resultant wound or the healing which takes place after the exposure is done that healing will take place in a uh, via scarring or fibrosis now because of this fibrosis or scarring what happens is the basically the fine vasculature or the blood vessels narrows down or hardens the blood vessels or the fine vasculature they were completely cutting off the blood supply now few areas in the human body are more susceptible to this kind of uh, uh, process wherein that particular area of the human body for example if you take the mandible there, if there is only a single uh, blood supply that is your uh, inferior alveolar artery that is a single uh, and the sole uh, blood supply without any uh, other collaterals which supplies the whole of the mandible now if this uh, fine vasculature is affected by the radiation process during the acute exposure uh, uh, period subsequent healing will totally block this particular artery uh, because of fibrosis or scarring processes, they were completely stopping the blood supply to the whole of the mandible. Now, this stoppage of blood supply will result in further sequelae of uh, 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 sequelae of effects like complete hypocellular uh, areas or hypo hypoxic areas because of lack lack of oxygen uh, uh, supply to that particular area. And because of the lack of blood supply, there is no immunity uh, immunological factors which are. are uh, uh, present within the blood are uh, lacking in this particular area because of the lack of blood supply basically. So all these uh, factors contribute to further different types of sequelae which I'll be talking about. All these sequelae come under chronic exposure. So the acute exposure is directly because of the energy produced or the energy given out by this X-ray ionizing radiations and the chronic exposure is because of the uh, sequelae of uh, processes which take place after the inflammatory process or the healing process takes place that comes under the chronic exposure. So what are the different factors uh, upon which this damage to the, the surrounding uh, areas or the uh, biological tissues are dependent upon? Primary or uh, most obvious factor is the dose rate depending upon the amount of dose or radiation dose or ionizing dose given out to the human body Give for a uh, particular uh, period of time, the rate at which this dose is uh, administered to the human tissue that totally depends or uh, 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 that is directly proportional to the amount of uh, uh, damage which takes place within in the surrounding areas. Next most prime uh, important factor is the oxygen supply. Now we all know that the amount of oxygen supply given to a particular area is directly proportional to the damage which takes place after that specific area is exposed to radiation. Now the question arises as to why that is because of the free radicals. Now we all know the various number of free radicals, the unstable kind of free radicals, the most important or damaging kind of uh, unstable free radicals are all a byproducts of this oxygen molecule. So the amount of oxygen, the how uh, the greater amount of uh, uh, oxygen percolation to that particular area determines the amount of damage primarily because the amount of uh, the number of free radicals which are uh, seen in that particular area after the radiation process is much more when compared to the other uh, tissues. So that being the second most important factor. Next uh, is the linear energy transfer concept which I uh, talked about in the last uh, class wherein the ionizing radiation, the different types of ionizing radiations depending upon the sizes and depending upon the penetrating power, depending upon the rate at which these uh, particles give out energy to the surrounding areas that determines the amount of damage. Now with, uh, for example, if you take alpha particles which are of uh, higher, uh, higher density or uh, bigger size, 
they give out energy to the surrounding areas at a much rapid rate than some uh, say neutron ray, uh, rays or uh, uh, cathode rays or x-rays for that matter now the amount of energy which is given out again uh, translates into the number of uh, free radicals which are produced because of this uh, dissipated energy so the linear energy transfer also so called as let is directly proportional to the number of free radicals which are produced directly proportional to the amount of uh, damage which takes place to that specific area now, the next factor uh, play is the temperature uh, temperature again the higher amount of temperature which is uh, seen uh, or uh, gr greater the temperature greater the uh, uh, probability of these uh, production of free radicals greater is the probability of the damage now the age of the cell now the age of the cell is very important uh, when it comes to radiation uh, and the now uh, malignant changes or the abnormal changes which takes place now we all know that uh, because of a physiological process called apoptosis there is a process wherein a few uh, these cells uh, are uh, born they live for a specific period of time and they gradually die out and become senile after a specific period of time now in few cases what happens is because of uh, deregulation of this apoptotic cascade or apoptotic mechanism what happens is the time period for which these uh, senile or about to die cells uh, which stay in, uh, in the human uh, specific tissue that uh, time period gets prolonged so what happens over there is when these uh, about to die uh, cells are exposed to radiation compared to its normal counterparts there is a higher probability of DNA changes or abnormal uh, protein productions or abnormal mutations. The probability of all these is much more higher if the age of the cell is much uh, is more than its counterpart. So in uh, situations wherein uh, this apoptotic cascade is dysregulated, deregulated and there are more number of age cells, the chances of uh, the abnormal mutations chances chances of any abnormal uh, growths or cancers is much more higher when this tissue is exposed to radiation so that also plays an important role uh, uh, bit, uh, and the link between the radiation as well as the damage to the human tissues and the uh, last more more uh, important factor the most recent uh, addition to uh, radiation physics that is the radio radio protectors and radio sensitizers now what these uh, specific uh, macromolecules do is they either sensitize the uh, uh, abnormal tissue uh, for example the cancerous tissue it sensitizes that particular area to the ionizing radiation so that much more damage can be uh, caused to that uh, specific abnormal area when compared to the surrounding normal tissue or on the other hand uh, vice versa it can also there are few macromolecules called as radio protectors which actually protect the normal tissues from the harmful effects of radiation when compared to the abnormal tissue so that these uh, uh, radiations can cause damage to the uh, unwanted area and leave out the specific normal area so what are the radiation effects at this uh, molecular level at the molecular level as said the macromolecules uh, which are present are most affected by uh, the radiation the most uh, common macromolecules within the human body as you know is the proteins of the nucleic acids and the proteins as you know there are various uh, secondary and uh, tertiary bonds between the protein uh, uh, submolecules the amino acids the, the, the various amino acids are uh, bonded by uh, uh, tertiary or secondary kind of uh, uh, bonds now these bonds are broken out by this uh, radiation effect thereby causing disruption of these bonds production of new uh, kinds of bonds between other uh, amino acids thereby completely producing abnormal kind of proteins which are not useful for the human body on the contrary they might cause some damage the other one is a nucleic acids now the nucleic acids as you know among the nucleic acids it is the dna more than the rna which is much more susceptible to uh, radiation primarily because of its larger uh, uh, organic content now this uh, what happens is as you know it is a double standard uh, DNA there might be different changes there might be loss of bases or disruption of these bonds or translocation of these bonds or produce a production of different abnormal kinds of uh, DNA structures the various uh, processes uh, by which a DNA can be damaged 
producing a different code, they were producing a different type of protein, which totally dysregulates the uh, normal physiological processes at that particular area. Now, among which we can see also see uh, the in the if we take the uh, cycle or the cell cycle into consideration, we can see the various uh, areas the G1, S, and G2 and M phase, wherein the S phase, wherein the DNA synthesis uh, takes place, is the most affected kind of a phase wherein uh, radiation will have its maximal effect uh, to produce some damage or uh, some kind of abnormal uh, protein structures some con some kind of abnormal uh, protein coatings when the cell cycle is within this s phase we can see the uh, uh, types of uh, dna damage a uh, few examples over here wherein the uh, double standard uh, dna this total breakage of the st uh, strand because of the breakage of the bonds over the between the bases at that particular uh, area because of the uh, high energy or because of this breakage uh, uh, abnormal kind of uh, DNA further synthesis of the same kind of DNA will produce uh, even more uh, amplifies this uh, particular breakage effect where you can see a single strand is broken out over here because of the X-ray production now when this uh, single uh, strand uh, uh, DNA further synthesizes itself will produce a double uh, break uh, breakage uh, points over here which even amplifies the effect of the initial x-ray production uh, upon the DNA so that being the radiation effects at the molecular level now the radiation effects at the cellular level now according to the laws of uh, Bergoni and uh, Triponde uh, the most sensitive cells are uh, those which have these uh, three uh, specific points uh, such as to say high mitotic rate poor level of uh, differentiation and uh, cells which may I, which might undergo a uh, great uh, greater number of mitoses in the future now if you have a look at these uh, three points uh, which according to these uh, scientists uh, say that the most sensitive cells the common feature uh, among all these cells is the presence or uh, the quantity of uh, DNA which is present in these cells that is a defining factor upon which a particular cell may be deemed as more sensitive or less sensitive now if you see cells which have high mitotic rate now you, you all know that uh, during uh, these uh, in the specific cell cycle the cells which have high mitotic rate also have the high amount of DNA which is getting ready for duplication so greater amount of uh, DNA which were in, uh, uh, in a present in cells which are actively taking part in mitosis now there then uh, the DNA quantity is more hence it becomes more sensitive to acceleration similarly for a primitive in the differentiation now for example if you take the skin structure the basal layers or the basal uh, germinal layers are the primary cells from which the upper layers or the upper layer of cells are produced now this is the most active uh, kind of uh, cells the, the most uh, primitive uh, or a poorly differentiated kind of cells when compared to the superficial cells wherein both the DNA quantity is less as well as it is more differentiated which does not uh, give rise to any other kind of cells so the basic the potential of uh, uh, differentiation again lies with the amount of DNA which is present or the level of differentiation which is uh, present to, uh, in that particular cell so that is again directly proportional to the amount of damage uh, caused because of the X-ray radiations and so then uh, moving on to the radiation effects of the organ or tissue level <coughs> so now moving on to the radiation effects at the organ or the tissue level now we are taking into consideration the radiation effects which is seen at the molecular level and the cellular level it is much more easier to uh, give a brief picture about the radiation effects upon the organic or the tissue level primarily the most sensitive uh, or the least sensitive uh, kind of organs or tissues primarily depend upon the uh, basic factors of the kind of cells whether they are poorly differentiated or highly differentiated whether the more primitive in their nature giving rise to uh, ability to give rise to uh, various other kind of uh, uh, cells or the uh, loss of this uh, ability or the presence or the amount of uh, DNA which is present in these kind of uh, cells uh, specific, uh, whether they are germinal cells or vegetative cells now, depending upon these basic factors, we can easily differentiate the various organs or the tissues into highly sensitive or uh, least sensitive uh, tissues. Now, the type of radiation effects upon these uh, organs or tissues as a whole, again, can be uh, uh, divided into 
non stochastic effects and stochastic effects the, the basic difference between both of them is a kind of effect which is seen because of this excitation now in non stochastic effects uh, what is seen is the, the amount of radiation which is incident upon that particular area of of uh, human tissue is directly proportional to the amount of damage which is seen or the dif directly proportional to the various severity of the signs or symptoms which are seen in this tissue now for example if we take a simple mucositis or a simple reddening of the eyes or a cataracts these are all the various uh, effects of uh, radiation upon the human tissue now say for example a uh, particular person is exposed uh, to 20 grays of uh, radiation he will have a kind of mild mucositis or so mild reddening of the eyes now if this uh, person is exposed to double the exposure say say about 20 or 40 uh, grays the amount of severity the uh, severity of this uh, uh, these uh, reddenings or mucositis proportionately increases so the the amount the it is a dose dependent kind of uh, relation which we see between the effects of this radiation as well as the do, uh, dose uh, which to which this human uh, tissue is exposed to so it is totally dose dependent and the severity is directly proportional to the amount of dose given now whereas the stochastic effects now this is not dose dependent it is not dependent upon the amount uh, say if we increase the dose or decrease the dose the signs and symptoms uh, is seen in these cases or these stochastic effects doesn't change what changes over here is the probability of that human tissue developing that particular condition now for, for example if we say uh, if we take leukemia now leukemia is a condition or a malignant condition wherein the, not the dose but the uh, amount uh, not the amount of dose but the uh, duration uh, uh, du duration for which this uh, particular human tissue is exposed to this kind of radiation determines the probability of that uh, person developing leukemia leukemia or not developing leukemia apart from the dose uh, there are various other factors upon which the person may develop this condition now that is grouped under stochastic effects so this is not dose dependent and the, the severity of the symptoms do not uh, depend upon the amount of dose but the probability of the uh, you, uh, of the particular person developing this kind of uh, uh disease or developing this kind of effect changes with the amount of dose now uh, as i said depending upon the various uh, uh basic principles upon which the sensitivity of a particular cell is dependent upon to the radiation tissue we can uh, easily categorize them into high sensitivity intermediate sensitivity and low sensitivity tissues now if we take a broad look at uh, the structures we can see the structures where wherein we have germinal tissues the basic uh, germinal cells from which other kinds of cells are produced such as the bone marrow the te uh, testes or the mucous membrane the basal membrane of the mucous membrane all these cells wherein which are most susceptible and the organs which uh, have these kind of cells are naturally uh, categorized into the high sensory areas depending upon the other uh, factors uh, and that are presence of other kind of cells we can uh, classify the other organs such as the uh, bone cartilage and uh, blood vessels into intermediate sensitivity and the least uh, uh, sensitive tissues are uh, tissues which uh, have lost their capability to grow lost the capability to differentiate any further and have lost the capability of uh, any further mitosis the most best example i can give over here is the optic lens or the liver which do not grow after a certain period of time they lose their capability of growth hence the amount of dna which is present in these uh, tissues or uh, cells are much more lesser when compared to other uh, area other organs or tissues thereby uh, categorizing them into low sensitivity areas so how this radiation effect is important for the dental physician primarily because of the various effects seen uh, 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 in the oral cavity because of this ionizing radiation the most important part which is affected is a oral mucous membrane Uh, and the most common kind of uh, uh, disease which is seen is mucositis now mucositis is nothing but inflammation of the mucous membrane now how this happens is uh, basically uh, a, a non stochastic effect as i talked about uh, you before it is totally dose dependent the severity of the uh, lesions 
is dependent upon the amount of dose which is uh, given out or the to which the human tissue is exposed to. Uh, the tissue over here is oral mucous membrane. But, uh, normally within the first uh, 48 hours to 72 hours, the first reddening of uh, the tissue is seen because of the uh, atrophy or the loss of uh, deepthalization of the uppermost uh, uh, layers of the oral mucous membrane. Thereby, as the treatment progresses or the, as the radiation exposure uh, progresses, this uh, topmost reddened uh, area is, overlay, uh, is covered by yellow uh, pseudomembranous uh, kind of uh, layers, which is a, a next uh, stage of uh, mucositis. Uh, how we uh, can uh, uh, prevent uh, mucositis is to, it is naturally uh, regressing in uh, uh, reg regressing condition wherein after the stoppage of the radiation, gradually the severity of the mucositis is uh, reduced and the si uh, situation comes back to the normal. Now this is a, these are the pictures of a patient uh, exposed to radiation therapy. We can see how the uh, reddened area is a primary area, which is uh, the initial uh, phase of mucositis. The next phase is the covering of the uh, area with the uh, yellow pseudomembranous uh, layers. Similarly, upon the soft palate, as you can see over here. Now, the management, as I said, uh, predominantly maintaining good oral hygiene during the process of radiation. Along, if the pain is unbearable, you can always apply topical anesthetics such as 1% lidocaine. And the best part of mucositis, it is reversible. It is not a non-irreversible process. As soon as the radiation uh, therapy is ceased, this, uh, uh, this severity gradually reduces, giving back the normal oral mucous membrane. The other most important factor which affects the oral mucous membrane is the presence of secondary infections. As we uh, know, a radiation uh, uh, process or radiation therapy primarily reduces the immunity of uh, these uh, uh, patients, reduces or uh, has an effect upon the salivary glands, reduces the amount of saliva which is produced both in quantity as well as in quality. The immunity factors which are present within the saliva are lost. Uh, because of the radiation process, destroyed because of the radiation process, the amount of saliva again reduces. Now, this all these uh, have an uh, uh, effect uh, which is known as xerostomia upon the uh, uh, oral mucous membrane. And because of this, because of the dry weather uh, with a dry uh, atmosphere within the oral mucous membrane, the uh, probability of uh, having any secondary infections, primarily the candle infections, is much more higher. As you can see in this uh, uh, patient, we can see the candidal infections as evident by the yellow uh, uh, pseudomembrane crust upon the uh, lips, lower lips, as well as on the tongue. The other uh, affected area is your taste buds. You now, again, because of two effects, primarily because of the direct effects of radiation. Again, as I uh, told you, the radiation effects are classified as direct and indirect effects. The direct effect over here is the direct cell degeneration. Or the atrophy or the deepitalization of the taste buds or the taste uh, cells uh, present on the uh, tongue. Now, the other indirect effect is a lack of saliva. Uh, we all know the where saliva is very much important for a taste acuity in a normal uh, human beings. Now, because of the lack of uh, saliva over here, there is also loss of uh, taste acuity. Primarily, this effect is seen when the radiation dosage goes uh, greater than or equal to 120 grays. The other most important uh, affected uh, organ is the salivary glands. As I said, uh, because of uh, uh, most of this uh, radiation therapies, which is uh, given out to the oral and maxillofacial region, uh, inevitably uh, involves the salivary glands. Be one or more uh, uh, pairs of in uh, salivary glands, they inevitably get exposed to. So any kind of oropharyngeal cancers during the uh, radiation therapy. These salivary glands get affected. They get uh, uh, the parenchymal tissues within the salivary glands get affected. There is loss of architecture of the normal uh, parenchymal cells. So the loss of saliva producing cells. So there is a decrease in the quantity of saliva, also decrease in the quality of saliva. Thereby, uh, uh, the compensatory mechanism, which is the hypertrophy of these uh, remaining cells uh, takes place. There is enlargement of the cells. And after a certain period of time, there is complete uh, xerostomia. Now, if uh, proper radio protectors or sensitizers not uh, are taken into consideration, and if the radiation therapy 
uh, is a uh, prolonged for more uh, period of time or is necessary for more period of time, the patient suffers from severe xerostomia. Off late, the most uh, effective kind of uh, radio uh, protector was, is uh, amifostin that is uh, uh, approved by the FDI. Now, what this amifostin does is it protects the salivary glands uh, from the radiation exposure when uh, doing the radiation therapy. They were protecting these uh, salivary uh, parenchyma cells. They are desensitizing these parenchyma cells to the radiation effects of uh, doing the therapy. So, uh, somewhat it provides a much better relief to other patients which are not on who are not on uh, amifostin. The other most important uh, obvious effect which is seen is on the teeth. In general, in adults, they are very much resistant uh, to this radiation therapy. So, uh, but uh, what happens over here is during the development period of time wherein the, the germinal tissues have a dominant role to play. That is when the effect of uh, radiation is seen max. Now, uh, in uh, during the development, whenever there is uh, the primary tooth uh, buds or tooth germ cells are present, because of the uh, again the presence of DNA, the effect of radiation is seen, wherein there might be complete uh, absence or destruction of the tooth buds or the tooth germs, or they might be severely retarded. Now, as you can see over here, this is a. a uh, a, pedo, a pedo patient wherein the in, uh, patient was subjected to initial radiation therapy wherein you can see the permanent tooth buds in few cases especially in the premolars are totally destroyed now whatever remaining kind of uh, uh, tooth germs or tooth buds were seen they were severely malformed giving rise to stunted teeth as you can see which is evident over here now this is the effect of uh, radiation in during the growth process or the development process of the tooth buds but in general, once the formation takes place or the permanent teeth are in position, they are highly resistant to radiation. They are highly resistant to the direct effects of radiation. Now, what uh, actually uh, destroys the teeth is the indirect effects. As I said, because of the effect of on the quantity and the quality of saliva, because of the production, uh, because of the xerostomic condition of the patient, that produces a classical kind of typical kind of uh, caries that is a radiation caries. Now this radiation caries is not different from any other kind of uh, caries uh, as you see per se, but what differs is the etiological factor which is responsible and the typical clinical feature which is seen or the typical presentation of these caries is different what sets this apart. Now there are th clinically three types of uh, radiation caries. The primary being wherein the cementum and the de uh, dentin at the cervical region is affected. Now, uh, typically what we see is there is an encircling band of caries around the cementum and denta at the junction of the crown and the root portion. Now this uh, progresses as uh, the situation progresses, severity progresses, there is complete beheading of these crowns. So what uh, remains over there are darkened root stumps. This is clinically uh, typical of uh, patients on long term uh, radiation therapy. Now other clinical type is a generalized superficial lesions wherein all the surfaces be it the labial or the lingual which are normally resistant to normal type of caries wherein the labial and the lingual uh, areas are not the smooth surfaces are least prone for caries now these surfaces are also affected in the uh, the clinical type of radiation caries the third type is we don't see any frank kind of uh, dental carious regions but this total dark pigmentation of all the teeth uh, generalized uh, uh, to all the teeth. Now, apart from that, we have also worn out incisal uh, areas. That is the third type. We can see that the uh, incisal areas are totally worn out with general pigmentation. We can see the cementum and the dentin which is affected. We can see the circle or band of uh, carious lesion around the junction between the crown and the root portion. Now, the other uh, effect which is seen is upon the bone. Now, the bone, uh, as I told, uh, because of the single blood supply, that is the inferior alveolar artery, predominantly uh, which supplies to the whole of the mandible, the mandible or the bone is the most affected kind of uh, uh, tissue within the oral maxillofacial uh, bony structures. Now, uh, because of that, the primary damage is again not because of the uh, direct exposure or a direct effects of radiation, 
but it is because of the secondary effects that is because of the damage to the fine vasculature that the effects of a uh, uh, bone destruction is seen in these cases now the most uh, other most important uh, tissue which is affected is the bone uh, as i told because of the primarily because of the single blood supply to the mandible because of the say, uh, indirect uh, effects of radiation that is because of the destruction of the fine vasculatures and uh, because of the fibrosis or scarring seen in this fine vasculatures there is complete blockage of blood supply and the blockage of blood supply uh, deprives the area of uh, two things that primarily the nutrition and uh, secondly the oxygen and also uh, uh, we also have lack of any immunological factors uh, which are present within the blood these are uh, the various uh, things which are deprived to this areas where because of the blockage of the single nerves a uh, single blood supply sorry so because of that uh, we have this uh, effect of uh, these uh, seen on the bones primarily resulting in osteoradial necrosis that is the single most important kind of uh, disease which is seen in uh, most of the uh, uh, radiation therapy uh, patients uh, lack of proper care uh, will result in this uh, kind of condition uh, the the most important thing we have to remember is the 3h principle that is hypoxic hypocellular hypovascular the blockage of vasculature is, uh, leads to lesser amount of uh, blood supply resulting hypovascular condition lack of blood supply uh, results in uh, lack of any uh, rbcs or wbcs or platelets to be uh, supplied to that particular area they were resulting in a hypocellular uh, uh, kind of a condition and because of the lack of blood supply the rbcs uh, because of the lack of uh, rbc supply to the area we have a hypo hypoxic kind of condition also all these interacting uh, together to produce a condition called as osteoradial necrosis and we can see in this uh, picture the osteoradial necrosis the bone exposure in these areas now how we can prevent this uh, condition it is only uh, because uh, only uh, dependent upon the kind of uh, hygiene we maintain now all these uh, uh, patients wherein uh, any, uh, any kind of minor surgical proce procedures or invasive procedures uh, have to be dealt with if they are uh, on uh, radiation therapy we have to make sure that this all these procedures are completed at least Three weeks prior to the radiation therapy commencement, so uh, any uh, such kind of uh, uh, procedures should not be undertaken during the process of uh, radiation therapy, uh, and uh, very uh, uh, high importance should be attached to maintaining good oral hygiene uh, in these patients. Now, these, if taken care of, will drastically reduce the incidence of osteoradial necrosis in radiation therapy patients. The the most uh, the other is the muscles, uh, probably one of the most uh, radio resistant tissues. But whatever uh, a little amount of damage which is seen to the muscles is primarily because of the uh, damage to the vasculatures, which uh, gradually uh, deprives the muscles of the nutrition, gradually results in atrophy of the muscles, thereby resulting in the degeneration. Now. The other most uh, important concept over here is a whole body radiation. Now, in cases such as the nuclear fallouts or nuclear hazards or uh, atomic bombings, as seen as seen in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, these when the whole body is uh, exposed to increased amounts of radiation, a typical collection of signs and symptoms are seen in these uh, individuals, which is uh, termed as acute radiation syndrome or uh, ARS. Now, this is uh, typical. For a whole body exposure, now these are uh, not a single uh, kind of disease, but it is a various collection of signs and symptoms affecting different kinds of uh, 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 tissues or uh, cells within the body. Now, what happens over here is dependent upon the dose of uh, uh, exposure. The various manifestations are seen. Now, if you see in this table, a dose of one or one to two uh, grays. That, that that is the initial dosage. We have prodromal symptoms, that is the initial nausea, uh, the vomiting uh, sensation, uh, the initial uh, uh, initial prodromal symptoms, the fever, the temperature rise, uh, the nausea, all these are the initial prodromal symptoms which are seen uh, wherein the when the exposure is between 1 or 2 uh, grays. Now between 2 and 4 grays we have the mild hemopoietic symptoms and 4 to 7 we have the severe uh, hemopoietic systems. 
the symptoms that is basically uh, the loss or the damage to the uh, epithelial structures of the vasculatures or the direct effects of this radiation upon the various uh, cells of the, the blood. Primarily, uh, uh, primary effects, uh, the first are seen on the WBCs, next uh, with the platelets and next uh, comes the RBCs. Now, why this uh, particular sequelae? It is dependent upon the life cycles of the various uh, cells. The minimum, the WBCs have a, a lifespan of uh, say one week or just uh, one week. So the first sim uh, first effect is seen upon these cells because of the uh, uh, lesser amount of lifespan and the mac the later effects the latest effects will be seen on the rbcs which have the maximum kind maximum lifespan of uh, 120 days so that being the hemopoietic system there is gradual uh, anemia there is gradual thrombocytopenia there is la uh, gradual leukopenia uh, leukopenia now all these uh, uh, will result in the decreased immunity of the patient susceptibility to uh, different kind of infections the severity of the infections depends upon the severity of the hemopoietic symptoms all these may ultimately lead to uh, death because of uh, secondary infections. Now, if, uh, exposed uh, uh, grace is around 7 to 15. Then we have gastrointestinal symptoms, wherein we have uh, degeneration of the desquamation of the, of the inner linings of the intestine, thereby uh, resulting slubbing of uh, uh, huge amounts of uh, tissue within the inner linings of the GIT, thereby leading to huge amount of blood loss huge amount of uh, uh, diarrheal symptoms, uh, uh, GIT pain, uh, this might uh, ultimately uh, re uh, result in uh, a total amount of uh, blood loss and a lack of nutrition, lack of uh, uh, proper absorption of the food. All these uh, symptoms ultimately might uh, lead to the death of the patient. So the most severe kind of uh, uh, symptoms are seen when the dosage is, is increased uh, above 50 grays. That is when we have the CVS of the CNS symptoms. Now, in all other symptoms, uh, the the patient usually has a period of 30 days uh, during uh, during which these symptoms might uh, lead to death. So, intervention within the 30 days uh, might uh, reverse the processes or control the uh, symptoms. But what happens in CVS and CNS? It is uh, it is much more rapid. Within a period of just 48 hours, uh, the symptoms uh, gradually worsen up, leading uh, ultimately leading to coma or uh, death. So the CVS systems is basically uh, all the uh, CNS, uh, uh, heart muscles or the cardiac muscles are affected over here. Uh, they were resulting in arrhythmia or uh, 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 articular defects or uh, all other kind of uh, cardiac symptoms. And the most severe is the CNS symptoms, which lead to uh, stupor or the seizures they might also lead to uh, coma disorientation of the motor uh, motor and the sensory skills all these are much more severe kind of uh, symptoms which are seen when the exposure increases above 50 grays ultimately leading to death so how do we manage it uh, primarily uh, we try to uh, control the symptoms now because of the uh, effect was seen on the hemopoietic system uh, because of the lack of immunity, there is a greater chance of uh, secondary infections. So, thereby we have to contract with uh, uh, antibiotics, uh, a huge uh, high dose uh, antibiotics. Then we have, uh, because of the GIT symptoms, because of the huge amount of loss of blood, fluids and the disimbalance of the electrolytes, because of the lack of absorption within the GIT system, there is fluid and electrolyte substitutions. Whole uh, blood transfusions, again because of severe uh, hemopathic or uh, uh, symptoms or severe GIT symptoms wherein there is a huge amount of loss of blood both in the quantity quantity wise as well as the quality wise and the more other uh, even more severe uh, uh, kind of uh, patients uh, with the severe uh, symptoms can go for uh, bone, uh, bone marrow grafts uh, preferably between identical tens because to reduce the uh, uh, chances of any reject graft rejection. So that uh, brings us uh, to the end of uh, radiation biology and the health physics. Thank you.